guys get to see all of the coolest things that I find before anybody else, but you don't always get to find out what they end up selling for. So today I am going to be going through some of the things that I've shown you guys in past videos and I'm going to tell you guys what they ended up selling for. The rule is anything that's sold for over $150, that is what we're going to be talking about today. I don't know if you guys remember a trip that my brother and I did to the flea market, but we ended up finding some really amazing vintage airplane parts, which is super random, but this vendor had tons of like airplane nose cones and airplane propellers, all kinds of different really amazing airplane parts. The airplane nose cones sold very, very quickly. We ended up buying pretty much all of these airplane parts from this guy. So that means every single piece we probably paid anywhere from 20 to $30 for. And this airplane nose cone ended up selling for $162. All of these airplane nose cones all ended up selling for about that same price. People want airplane nose cones. Now the next items that I'm gonna share with you guys, this video was all about the baby boomers. All of these amazing knickknacks and figurines. Some of these things were incredibly valuable. So I'm gonna share with you guys how much some of these things actually ended up selling for. One of those things was this crystal bottle. Baccarat makes a lot of French crystal. They have all kinds of different things from figurines and statues. They totally cover the spectrum when it comes to crystal wear. Now this particular piece was interesting because it was so small. I didn't know what this thing was actually for because it was so small. Guys, now here's my concern with this bottle. Look at the size of this. You can't use it for liquor or whiskey or wine. It's too big to be a perfume bottle. You guys saw a perfume bottle. This is just like this tiny, like what is it like that, like take it running, you just, it's like a water bottle. I got a lot of comments saying that this was actually used for olive oil or like vinegar and you, you would use this at dinner parties. They only wanted $50 for it. It ended up selling for $155. But the other thing that they had at this estate sale was this super teeny tiny teacup. Or better yet, this is actually an espresso cup. So this would have been used for espresso coffee, which is right up my alley. This is from a company called Coalport and Coalport has been around for years and years and years. So if you missed that video, you may want to go back and check it out. But this cup was absolutely beautiful, completely hand painted. This tiny little espresso cup ended up selling for two hundred dollars and i believe they only wanted twenty dollars for this so this was actually a really good flip but these are also super rare they come in a lot of different designs they come in a lot of different styles so it's really important to pay attention to these tiny little espresso cups so the next thing i'm going to share with you guys this thing was really cool like i had never seen one of these before but this was basically a tabletop model payphone Right, like we all know the wall model payphones that are stuck to the wall. You put a few coins in it and you called your friends and family from prison. You never called your friends and family from prison, okay. So maybe this was like in a daycare center, I don't know. I ended up finding this for $20 and somebody in Canada ended up buying this for $175. So that was actually a really good flip. I've never seen a tabletop model payphone before. So this was actually really exciting. I was like, yes, I'm gonna get this. And it's $20, you can't really go wrong with something like this. So the next thing that I'm gonna share with you guys was from a video that I did where I ended up buying one thing on Craigslist and the owner of this house ended up having me go through his house, which was mildly terrifying because he left me completely alone. And I'm like, I don't know what is happening in this home right now, but I'm wandering around aimlessly by myself. It ended up working out perfectly. He wasn't a mass murderer, which was great. And he had some amazing Mexican folk art in his house. And he ended up selling me each of these pieces individually for $20, which was a great price for vintage Mexican folk art. But he had this incredible cougar mask. This thing was one of the largest cougar masks like this that I had ever seen. It had tusks coming out of it. It was completely hand painted. And I was just like, yes take my money. This piece here actually ended up selling for $250. I'm super excited to have even found something like this. 
Part of being a reseller means sometimes you're gonna find things that you absolutely love that you wanna keep, but just to make yourself feel better, you're gonna list them and then you're gonna like list them a little higher than you should just so maybe you can keep it for a little bit longer and then somebody's still gonna buy it anyways. It's time for a moment of silence. If I think that covers it. <sighs> okay, you guys, so. I don't know if I want to sell this. I actually really like having it here. I'm gonna list it, but probably for some outrageous amount that nobody would ever buy it at. It's gone. It's gone. Somebody bought that. And I specifically said it. I was gonna ask some astronomical amount of money that nobody would ever pay for it. I guess it wasn't astronomical enough. So I was asking like $270 for something like this and somebody offered $235 and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it for me. I just, I just accept. And now it's gone and I have nothing to put here. But also, I'm not in this business to keep things. I paid $70 for it, so I had to move it. It was gone and now I'm sad. The next thing that I'm gonna share with you guys, this was from a video where I was taking you guys on a walk through history, all the different things that you could find from the different decades in history, and this particular piece is super old. This is from the 1910s. What do we call the 1910s? Like, the 1910s? You got the 20s, you got the 30s, you got the 40s, you got the 50s. What do you call the 10s? Anyways, I have something from the 1910s to show you guys. This particular piece is absolutely incredible. This is from a company called Harrington, and this was a fire box. So basically, if there was a fire on a street in the 1910s, you could run outside and you'd pull this lever and it would alert everybody on the block there was a fire so everybody could run out of their house and get to safety, which is a great idea, right? And we still use these till this day. Like, in the city that I live in, you can still find these on the streets. So this is really amazing. This particular one is incredibly old, so it's a little bit more rare. I was super excited to find something like this for only $40, because if you can find these that have all of the original internal pieces, they can go for a lot of money. It ended up selling for $250. I'm sure whoever got this was super pleased with it because it was all in original condition. You guys may remember a video that I did. There was one particular booth that had brand brass pieces and just junk scattered everywhere, which is sort of one of my favorite things to look through. Like I kind of like looking through junk sometimes, like you just never know what you're gonna find. But he had this incredible antique nautical ship lantern that was sort of in all of this junk and I'm like, this thing is amazing did not look to be in good condition at all. It was dented, it had a lot of wear to it. It did not look to be in good condition at all, but when I looked at it, this was a really, really old piece. In fact, this didn't even have a maker's mark on it, which is not a deal breaker for something like this, because if you can find a really, really old nautical ship lantern, they can still be really valuable even if they don't have a maker's mark. He wanted $60 for this. Because of the age and because this still had all of the original pieces to it, it still had the original burner in it, you guys. I was willing to take a risk on something like this. Somebody ended up buying this for $250. 250 So I was very excited about that got this shipped out and I kind of miss it because it was really amazing. So you guys may remember a video that I did where I ended up getting a hotel room and checking out all of the different antique shops in the area. One of the really cool things that I found during this trip was this amazing vintage machete. Now this is a tribal piece from the Dayak people in Indonesia. And there's a lot of amazing history with this particular tribe, but they have some of the most incredible incredible woodwork that you are ever going to see. They make amazing bowls and statues and their beliefs are really incredible. The detailing on their work is really incredible. This particular machete was just sitting in an antique booth. They wanted $95 for it, which is a lot for an old knife. I totally get it, but the detailing on the handle, everything was hand carved. I absolutely wanted this piece. Somebody ended up buying it for $290. And last but not least, you guys, I took you to an antique lighting shop where there were tons of lamps and chandeliers and sconces, some really, really amazing vintage lighting. 
And one of the lamps that I had found there, I was super excited to find. This was a Handel lamp. Handel does a lot of lamps in this style. They've got the hand-painted shades, but it's really important to determine whether or not they are actually Handel by really examining the lamp. I know a lot of you guys are like, you spent $125 on a lamp? <sighs> It's a lot, I know, but for a Handel lamp, I am going to take the risk on this. Handel lamps are really rare, you guys. You don't see them very often. And it sold within the first week for $550. And that's probably on the lower end for what some of these Handel lamps can go for because it really depends a lot on the shade. A lot of these Handel collectors really want intricate, shades and this particular one the shade wasn't super intricate so i hope this was helpful for you guys i know that you don't always get to see what a lot of my stuff sells for you get to see it right when i find it i always want to show you the coolest new things that i'm finding because this is another what's sold video what i want to hear from you guys is your questions i'm going to be answering all of your questions if there's things that you've seen in a past video and you're curious what they may have sold for questions about reselling or just questions in general feel free to ask them in the comment section below super excited to read you guys' comments and answer them in the upcoming what's sold video which will probably be in a few weeks so if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes and as always thank you guys for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day